Hello guys and gals and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the unique pike known as the Tanner Gore Rod. Uh, the Tanner Gore Rod pike is actually kind of an interesting one because it has some very interesting uses. Most notably is its use as a mercenary weapon for farming the council. Uh, specifically because it has that massive 15% maximum fire resistance bonus along with 15% fire resistance to get them to that resistance bot cap. So if you're utilizing this particular item on a character and you put this item on, you will get immediately a nice 15% bonus to your cap fire resistance. And uh, let me see if I actually have some charms here that I can use to, uh, to beef my resistances up just a tad bit so I can show you. Uh, so immediately you go from 75% fire resistance uh, to 90% fire resistance, just like that. Um, that is one of the main benefits of this particular item, and it's actually a, not a bad low-level unique, and it upgrades fairly well. So uh, as we go over this, you'll kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, so right off the bat, you'll notice that it has a very nice damage of 28 to 126, which is pretty high for a normal level unique. And it has 45 dex and 60 strength requirement, which is relatively low. Uh, at only level 27. Now the biggest downside of this spear is that it is a slow class attack speed spear. So it's not going to hit very fast and it's best used in the hands of somebody who can hit very hard and very quickly. Like for instance a leap attack barbarian which has been patched by the way, you might want to check it out. Uh, a charge paladin or maybe even an impale amazon or something of that nature. But I think where the Tanner Gorad Pike does its best work is on a mercenary uh, because it protects the mercenary from the hydras, which are otherwise detrimental to their health. So if you're farming the council on a regular basis, you can put this on a mercenary, give your mercenary 90% fire resistance, and, uh, and generally have him be mostly immune to the damage that they're outputting. Um, it has 100% enhanced damage on it, which is fairly high, and it does vary by 20%, so it's 80 to 100%. Uh, it also has a plus 60 to attack rating on it, which is very nice. Uh, it's definitely always nice to have attack rating on a weapon because it makes a big difference in whether you can actually hit stuff or not. Uh, we have 23 to 54 fire damage, which is actually a pretty decent amount for level 27. 30 to life on here, which is a pretty nice little bonus to life uh, at level 27. And then we got 15% maximum fire resistance and fire resistance plus 15%, which we were talking about earlier, um, as well as a bonus to light radius of plus 3. Now, if we are going to put this on a mercenary, we probably want the ethereal version, which is going to have even better stats. So we've got 42 to 188 two-handed damage, uh, 35 dex, 50 strength, level 27. Now, these can be upgraded, of course, uh, very easily with a Rao, a Soul, and a Perfect Emerald. Um, and they're going to go from 28 to 126 damage, 45 dex, 60 strength, level 27, to 54 to 228 damage, 88 dex, 110 strength, level 32. As you can see, a really nice upgrade there as far as level is concerned from only 27 to 32. And the defense, or sorry, the damage went up very nicely uh, to 54 to 228. Now the strength requirement did go up to 110, which is a little bad. And 88 dex is a little high, especially when you combine that with the 110 uh, strength requirement. But most characters that are going to be utilizing something like this will probably be able to meet those requirements. Uh, the Ethereal version can upgrade as well with a Rowl, a Soul, and a Perfect Emerald. And that's going to go from 42 to 188, 35 dex, 50 strength, level 27. To 80 to 342, 78 dexterity, 100 strength, level 32. As you can see, a nice little upgrade for the Ethereal version as well with a pretty healthy amount of damage. And, uh, and honestly would do quite well on a Act 2 Desert Mercenary. Now we can upgrade this a second time uh, to the Elite version with a Pull, a Lum, and a Perfect Emerald. Um, and that is going to go from 54 to 228 damage, 88 dex, 110 strength, level 32, to 66 to 356 damage, 106 dex, 165 strength, level 78. Not a very good upgrade for the um, non-ethereal version to the Elite tier. Uh, it's not really high enough damage, I think, for level 78, but um, there's definitely better choices. As for the ethereal version, um, I do feel like this one actually upgrades well. It goes from 80 to 342 damage, 78 dex, 100 strength, level 32, to 98 to 534 damage, 96 
dexterity, 155 strength, level 78. And of course you can socket it and put some more stuff in there to make it faster or hit harder. Uh, my suggestion would probably be a shell rune, just simply because it is such a slow weapon that the speed bonus will make a huge difference in its damage output. Um, all in all, really what this weapon is good for, and if you've never used it for this, shame on you. <laughs> Uh, is finding an ethereal version, double upgrading it, socketing it, put something nice in it, and throw it on your mercenary while you're farming the council. It's really the best use for it. It protects your mercenary from the council because it gives him 90% fire resistance, and uh, you could maybe even uh, tack on something else that has fire absorption if you really want him to survive. But for the most part, uh, you need a high damage weapon that is going to help you know him kill things. And uh, the Tanner Gore Red Warpike definitely is high damage. It has the fire resistance and the maximum fire resistance that he needs to help keep him alive, as well as a little bump in HP as well. Is it the best weapon that you could possibly put on a mercenary? No. Is it a good weapon to farm the council with? Yes. Um, let's take a look and see where we could potentially find ourselves a Tanner Gore Red if we wanted to get our hands on it. And, um, yeah. Uh, I'm not really exactly sure where these drop. It's been a little while since I found one, but um, I remember I was hunting for one for my friend who wanted an ethereal one for his council runs uh, because it was imperative that his mercenary not die, and, uh, well, this does a very good job in making sure that your mercenary doesn't die. Um, so according to uh, our silos pen here, our best non-quest monster is Diablo in normal difficulty with 1 and 286 and Bale with 1 and 307 and of course uh, Andoriel's not bad in Nightmare for 1 and 337. So a lot of really good choices there as far as uh, drop possibilities and um, as far as super uniques go, uh, Cow King in Nightmare has 1 and 878 uh, normal Neolithac 1 and 2000, even Nightmare Neolithac is 1 and 2900 and uh, even the Countess in Nightmare, 1 in 3,126. So pretty good chances all around to find this from a large number of monsters. Um, quite honestly, I don't really see a lot of trouble actually getting your hands on this, especially when someone like Shank the Overseer in Normal Difficulty can drop it, or Doc Farron in Normal Difficulty, or even Pindle in Normal Difficulty. So a lot of really good choices there. Um, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, um, even when we're talking about weird items like the Tanner Gore Rod. And, uh, I, I, you know, it's always kind of been one of those items that I wondered how the hell they came up with that name. I don't, I don't even know. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching. And uh, if you want to keep watching, be sure to hit that subscribe button.